let's talk for a little bit about the importance of earnestness in preaching. When I speak of earnestness, I simply mean the demeanor that is appropriate to the weight of the reality of the message or the reality of the text. Now, to clarify, the opposite of earnest is not joyful because there is joyful earnestness. The opposite of earnestness is flippant, glib, trivial, trite, silly, slapstick. That's what I'm eager to discourage. Spurgeon said there's a world of difference between a robust, reality-rooted humor and a crafted, calculated levity that is silly and superficial and glib and showman-like. And I'm just dismayed at how many churches seem bent on cultivating a show-like atmosphere, as though people can't find rich, deep, life-changing joy in an atmosphere that's not slapstick. I'm just baffled by this. So, understand, earnestness does not mean settled, glum, morose, downcast, certain kind of tone, it's good, you know what I mean? It's, this is, <laughs> that's as fake as is the crafted joke. We're not talking about that. And the reason we're not talking about, the reason earnestness can't mean that is because God didn't design the world that way. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't design the world so that the only kind of life that has seriousness to it would be a humorless life. Life is humorous <laughs> in really good ways. Let me give you a couple of illustrations from preaching, all right? You, you've had these if you've done this for a while. So here I am preaching one Sunday. Very serious message. I'm really blood earnest at this point in the message. I'm calling people to be countercultural and swim upstream against the flow of culture down to destruction. And I decide to create the image, I can't remember whether it's in my manuscript or not, that I want my people to be like dolphins not jellyfish, and I want them to be swimming like dolphins against the stream, just, instead of just kind of floating along with culture that's going to hell in a current. Almost said a hand basket. Doesn't work. So I said, you want to be a dolphin, don't you? Who wants to be a jellyfish? And this little girl, right on the second row right there, just so everybody could hear in the whole congregation, I do, she raised her hand and said, I do. <laughs> I mean, the place exploded with laughter. How could it not? That's the way God designed the world. That's funny. That's really funny. If you can't laugh at that, if that pastor at that moment has to feel like, oh, that wrecked my moment, you know, that wrecked my seriousness, that ruined my... He's sick. He's just sick. So understand that earnestness folds into itself real life. Here's, here's one other illustration that Justin Taylor reminded me of a while ago because he was in the service, I think. That's what he said. So I'm preaching along, and in one of my crazy gestures, which I don't ever think about, I'll talk about that later, I whacked my glasses off, and they went sliding across the stage. And people just burst out laughing, which, of course, they should. And I walked over and picked him up, and I thought, now what should I say? And I said, I see you, but you look like trees. <laughs> I thought that's pretty clever, because in the moment, you join, you join it. 
You don't scold it. You join it. God knocked Piper's glasses off. For whatever reason, he's got his purposes, and he means for the people to have a good guffaw. Most of us know that's what makes us laugh when when people who are ordinarily a certain way suddenly are forced to be another way, we laugh. So all that to clarify, when I say, let's be earnest, let's be blood earnest about the text, let's not be trite and glib, let's be earnest. I don't mean you can't be humorous, but I do mean not slapstick, not levity, not jokes that are extraneous. Everybody knows that's not really of the substance here. The reason earnestness should be pervasive in Christian preaching is because the realities that we are called to deal with demand it. God. This is the man to whom I will listen, says the Lord the man who trembles at my word. God is a great reality. We will never help people own, enjoy, experience the weight of the glory of God if we talk about him in casual, cavalier tones all the time. Second, sin. Sin is horrific. Do you realize? Surely you do. One sin brought down the universe. By one man's sin, many were appointed sinners, and according to Romans 8, the whole universe fell under corruption. Sin is staggeringly serious. Hell, Jesus, our precious Savior talked about hell more than anybody in the New Testament and used the most graphic, horrible descriptions of it. John, who's usually called the apostle of love, gave the most terrifying picture of it in Revelation 14, 11, using the strongest word or phrase in the Greek that could be used to call it eternal torment. You can't live in a world that has God over it and sin in it and hell beyond it waiting and not be pervasively earnest. And then there's the cross. And before it is sweet, it is horrible. The desecration of the Son of God is evil and ugly beyond imagination. And the sheer physical suffering is unimaginable. That must be felt at both those levels, spiritual and physical, before we can go to bed at night, sweetly restful. I'm saved. I'm saved from hell. I'm saved from my sin. I'm saved from guilt and Satan and death because of that horrible moment in the universe. That sweet delight is not a glib, silly delight. It's a weighty joy. And oh, how good it is. And then lastly, maybe I should mention, and there's so many more, joy. In your presence, God, is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I want for my people more than I want anything that they taste this weighty, massive, deep, vast, high, glorious joy. So, I commend to you earnestness. Doing all things, feeling all things, thinking all things, acting all things in proportion to the gravity and the gladness of the text's reality.